So I wanna show you how we figure out Richter magnitude, just using a quick example that I give my students. So what I've done here is I've taken about 30 of the biggest earthquakes in recorded history, and I wanna show my students how you can figure out the earthquake Richter magnitude. Richter magnitude is the amount of energy that's exerted from the earthquake epicenter. And you always hear magnitude five earthquake, magnitude seven earthquake, whatever it might be. I'm gonna show you a real simple way, and it does show up on the regions every once in a while, but I like doing this activity. So what I've done up top is I've given a seismogram. And basically what we wanna do is we wanna record the P wave arrival and the S wave arrival. Now there's no AM or PM here, so it's not a big deal. So your P wave arrival is four, 11, 20. The S wave arrival, which is given to you, is going to be four, 14, 40. So those arrival times are no problem. Okay, what I'll end up doing is, I know a lot of you are gonna be able to do your time math in your head. I like to actually write it out. So let me write it out up here. And your S wave arrival time is always gonna go on top because it's always a later time. Four, 14, 40. With the P wave always on the bottom. Four, 11, 20. So that subtraction is pretty straightforward. 20 from 40 is 20, three, and then zero. So zero hours, three minutes, and 20 seconds. That's my difference in arrival time or what we call lag time. So zero, zero, three. Notice how I always include a zero as a, as a placeholder for the hour. If you haven't looked at my video for, on how to subtract time, please check that out. Now from there, we're gonna go into, need to put my reference table up here. So the reference table is gonna be important for us because this is how we're gonna get our distance to the epicenter. So the distance to the epicenter, if you recall, your scale along the vertical axis, that's your time, that's in minutes. These are one minute increments, okay? And each little line in between is 20 seconds. Each one of your distance values goes by a thousand with each little line going by 200. So in order to get the epicenter distance, we have to mark off what I call the wedge method. We're gonna take the three minutes and 20 seconds and we're gonna wedge it. Put that right there. Mark off zero, always zero. And then three minutes and 20 seconds is right there. So zero, three minutes, 20 seconds. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna wedge it. What I mean by wedge? Well, I'm gonna take my two marks and I'm gonna wedge it between my two curves. You got the P wave curve and the S wave curve. Wanna make sure your paper doesn't tilt too much. Wanna make sure it's pretty straight up and down. Bring that down, bring it down. You wanna bring it down until your top mark touches the S wave, the bottom mark touches the P wave. And at that moment, you bring it straight down. In this case, it's a pretty decent distance. It's at the two mark, two meaning 2,000. And that's in kilometers. All right, so here's how you figure out the epicenter distance, how we're gonna use that to get the Richter magnitude. So I have three scales. I have a scale over here from epicenter distance. I have one for the magnitude and one for the S wave height. So my 2,000, I'm gonna mark it right here. Put a dot right there. So I put a mark right on the 2000. I want the Richter magnitude, but in order to get the magnitude, I need my S wave height. And my S wave height, that's called amplitude, is gonna be right here, 50 centimeters. So I'm gonna put a dot at the 50 centimeter mark for my S wave height. So I did my epicenter distance and my S wave height. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect them. This was a pretty good size earthquake the 2010 Chilean earthquake. So if I take that, it was about a seven on the Richter scale. So if I take that and I go through and I mark, connect, you can see that my line, wherever my line intersects my Richter magnitude scale, where it intersects it, that is going to be the magnitude. And that was about a 7.0 on the Richter scale back in 2010. That was a big one that destroyed Port-au-Prince, the capital of Haiti. 
right on a transform plate boundary. So that's right in line with the magnitude that many of the transform boundaries give us. So that was just a quick tutorial just how to find the Richter magnitude. This kind of problem shows up uh, often on regents exams. So I like to do this practice with my students. So until next time, everybody, please check out my other earthquake videos as well.